Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the CJRB Caldera, which is a really interesting budget knife. Yes, I said budget knife. This is an inexpensive knife. CJRB does a really good job with, you know, keeping things exciting as aesthetically uh, and keeping the price reasonable. They have definitely done that here. Uh, this is quite a bit different from a lot of the other competition in that sort of $40 to $70 range that we all look at uh, for budget knives. So I appreciate that. Really cool. This knife is available in two different forms. It comes in red or blue. I will link it right down below so you guys can check it out along with CJRB knives in general. Thanks so much to the gentleman who sent this in for review. This will go back to him when I'm done. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Okay, let's go ahead and get a measurement. This knife's not a not, not not a small knife by any stretch of the imagination. We're looking at eight and a quarter inches overall. Blade length, we're looking at, depending on where you measure it, it looks like three and a half inches. And then for the cutting edge, we're looking at eh, three and a sixteenth. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, it's not quite as long as the Rat 1, but it's definitely got some beef to it for sure. Let's go ahead and put it up against the uh, Demco 80. 20.5 which i sometimes forget about sorry about that it's a new size comparison knife let's go ahead and put it up against the spider co uh para 3 and the pm2 doing them backwards today because the pm2 is in a weird place there you go about the same size as the spider co pm2 and then last but not least we'll put it up against the benchmade griptilian or in this case the ritter hogue and the benchmade bug out all right so how's the action? This knife runs on bearings. It's a liner lock. It's got a flipper tab. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, it's not falling shut. I would imagine it'll just get smoother over time. It does feel consistent. The flipper tab seems to be positioned for the most part correct. You're kind of, when you push button it, you're kind of coming down on a point. If you light switch it, light switch it, it's definitely going to be a little bit more comfortable. The liner lock has plenty of access. It's just a little bit tight. So over time, you know, the tension there might kind of start to wear on your fingers. Um, very easy to deploy with the opening hole thing, right? And if you want to deploy it with your thumb, you'll need to make sure your thumb kind of goes out like that. But yeah, there's a bunch of ways to deploy uh, the knife and all of them work correctly. So that's really nice and satisfying. Let's go ahead and do carry profile, so thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here, it's a little bit, a uh, little on the thick side. Not anything insane, but definitely something you should take into consideration. We'll go ahead and put it up against the PM2 and Para 3 for length and height. This guy is definitely a tall boy. Uh, the tallest part, uh, part of the knife being right here, so you can see here it is dramatically above <laughs> that hump on the PM2, and it's also just about as long as the PM2 when closed, uh, almost exactly. So yeah, uh, it's going to take up a substantial amount of room in your pocket. So whether or not you're used to that will determine whether or not it is an enjoyable experience for you. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Take a look at the inside here real quick. I don't know why I started to close it. Don't whip your knives open. That's stupid. Um, people always ask me, why do you say that? Because it's enormous. Like if you whip them out like that, if you do the Call it the, the new guy whip, right? Everybody knows the guy who does this. He opens it like that and goes, right? Now, you know, a couple of times, it's not going to hurt it. But if you do that, like every single time that you open the knife, it's a massive amount, amount of wear on the stop pin, uh, which in turn will cause the liner lock to, in, you know, increasingly wear over, like faster than it normally would. And then at the end of that, the liner lock's life, you get lock rock, which creates unsafe uh, lock up. So don't do the new guy knife whip. That's uh, not to just use the force that is supplied by the flipper tab. Anyways, we do, <laughs> we do have weird tangents with metal complex. I should add a segment in the middle of the review, right? Where you just, you sort of get like a title card screen and you know when I'm about to go way off on a tangent. Uh, it would be better for the uh, algorithm figuring out where my timestamps are. Anyways, we do have milling on the inside. We get full steel liners, milling on the inside, which is probably good because it's already a heavy knife. Weight on the caldera coming in at a substantial 4.97 ounces. So we are not looking at a knife that hits the nail on the head in terms of perfect ratios. 
But you know, there's a lot of weight in the blade. So the balance point is still right behind the pivot, right where that, I'm gonna call it the primary choil is. So you're aware that it's a big knife, but it's not like, oh my gosh, this thing is so massive, I just couldn't possibly manipulate it, right? Let's go ahead and do a uh, hardware check. I'm gonna get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot is gonna be a T8. For some reason, CJRB insists on continuous uh, use of T6 fasteners. Bleh. Um, I'm gonna guess, you know, there's two holding in um, these inlays, or actually, you know, maybe, I think this is all together. I don't know if these actually come out. In any case, there have to be a couple more screws right, sorry, there have to be a couple more screws right here holding the steel uh, liner to the backspacer. So you're looking at quite a few extra screws, uh, extra. In fact, you know what? Instead of just saying this, let's go ahead and take it off. That way we know for sure uh, because there's nothing ultra complicated about this. It looks like it's a separate piece here, but sometimes when you have, lay yeah, this has got to be a separate piece. One, and then we'll do two. Really want to make sure you've got good tools, especially when it comes to stuff like T6, because I hate those heads. They're just really tiny. Wow, curiously enough, it actually does not. Oh yeah, no, it does. You can see right underneath there, there's two more screws. So they've got little pockets so that the G10 can rest on top of it. Interesting, okay, a lot of, a lot of extra there. Uh, you do get some a, a nice aesthetic. It's like if you're going to do that and you're going to add unnecessary plates to things, which, you know, it's just more that you have to deal with during disassembly. If you're going to do that, at least make it look good. And in my opinion, this does look good. So you're going to be dealing with four screws per side to do a complete disassembly um, because I believe that these screw all the way through and into those. Well, maybe they just screwed through to the G10. They have to get to thread, so probably part of those liners. So you're gonna be um, taking off four screws per side and they're gonna be T6. Not ideal, but not the end of the world. Make sure you've got quality tools and you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. You know, it doesn't look too thick. In fact, it doesn't look thick at all. It looks like it's gonna be about 120, maybe less. Oh, it wasn't zeroed. Let's try that again. And we're coming in at 123, so probably closer to 125, which is fine. That's on the thinner side of it. If we're gonna call 135 thousandths about the median zone for the knife world, as far as blade stocks go, then 125, you know, that's Ritter Hogue territory, so it's fine. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes here. I haven't covered a CJRB in a while. I will be covering some more soon, uh, but I haven't covered any for a while. They do a really good job with budget knives in terms of quality and in terms of just varying aesthetic designs. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, you, you look at a company like Civivi and it's like, we got a lot of knives, but a lot of them look almost exactly the same. Your choice of brown, green, blue, purple, black, pink, yellow, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. CJRB and like Kubi do a really good job of mixing it up with the overall design aesthetic. We have the traditional knife handle shape with the tr traditional blade shapes. And we have kind of crazy modified sort of sheep's footy things like this. And we've got kind of a, a different curvature to the handle. And I like that. We also have in this case, you know, the black contrasting with the red. And that's what I was talking about earlier. This is not a simple flat piece of G10. We have interesting areas down here like this. We have sort of this, you know, how it's laid in and how it meets up with the black part is just there's extra lines and things and it doesn't do anything functionally, um, but it looks cool. Uh, the whole design, like the whole theme here is going together without being too crazy. And I kind of like that. Black and red always looks nice up against each other and the blue and red, the blue and uh, black one looks fine. I don't know why on the blue one, they just, all they did was change this scale to blue and it still has a red pivot color. Why? M do a blue pivot, like make it, it's just like you can get red or you can get red and blue. <laughs> like what? Do a, do a 
do a totally blue one. Like, th that was weird to me, but you know, okay, whatever. Uh, another interesting thing here is this is, it appears to be an aluminum backspacer, and that's cool because aluminum can actually be anodized red, unlike titanium. So that's neat, uh, getting that uh, color there. For the blade, you do have an awesome choke up point. Let's go ahead and talk about ergonomics. Uh, ergonomically, this is a, uh, this thing is what I started to say. This knife is pretty comfortable. It's a little bit of a bill. This thing is pretty like whoop, right? Probably doesn't need to be sticking up that much, but that's, eh, it's rounded off. It's not that big of a deal, right? You're gonna notice it after 30 minutes of use with your bare hands for sure, but you know, if you're wearing gloves, fine. There's a lot of room on this thing. If you're gonna do a knife with a flipper tab, it really needs to, you know, you gotta make sure, if you're gonna do a flipper tab and a choil, that choil's gotta be roomy, and roomy it is. This is nice. I feel like I can comfortably hold the knife here, and I can comfortably hold the knife here. There's no part of the knife that really feels like it's digging into my hand all that much. I can't say it's absolutely hand melting, but I would definitely give it an A for ergonomics. And just, you know, the access points, all the parts of the knife that you engage with, meaning, you know, the liner lock, the hole for deployment, or the flipper tap, everything's right there and just feels very natural. It feels like it's supposed to be exactly where it is. So I appreciate the design, you know, I appreciate the thoughtfulness that went into it. Also appreciate that the edges of, the, right here, camera. <laughs> Camera's always like, you have a background? Um, but yeah, the edges of the hole here are nicely, uh, chamfered down, so that's plenty comfortable. And a little notch up here that you can use, you can rest your thumb in if you're gonna do some of that, you know, detailed work, I, I suppose. And it's still more comfortable to put your index finger up here if you're gonna be doing draw cuts. But yeah, if you're gonna be doing a little bit of detailed work, there is a little notch right here, which is an extra ergonomic feature that is not gonna be necessary for everybody, but I, I appreciate it, right? They, they got it in there and managed to make it look cool and it's not in the way of anything. Uh, speaking of nothing being in the way, uh, there is nothing in the cutting path. So you really can make full use of that blade, whether you wanna be choked up or back here. The, the edge does come down to a reasonably thin, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it tapers down and becomes reasonably thin. Not an absolute laser beam, but yeah, it's slicing pretty well. Mm, pretty minimal drag. I can feel, I think what I'm feeling is most likely the coating. Obviously your experience is gonna be different depending on what you cut, but just slicing some paper, it feels pretty good. This is an actual PVD coating according to Blade HQ. Uh, periodically they get stuff like that wrong, but everybody does. But yeah, it does feel like PVD and that's a real functional coating. So you are getting some, you know, a little bit of extra durability, I guess. I mean, it's a strong coating. It's not the, it's not like DLC, but it's strong and it will provide some additional corrosion resistance. So that's nice. And the coating uh, looks very even. It doesn't look sloppy. Uh, honestly, everything about the blade looks high quality. It says CGRB on one side and then unfortunately it has a serial number and you know, it says AR RPM 9, which is by the way, the blade steel. This is, I think it's, from what I understand, AR RPM 9, which is pretty much the only consistent powder form steel that you're gonna find in the budget territory. And it is a proprietary, you know, cake mix as far as, you know, CJRB is, they, they, they create it, right? Um, or the, the parent company, which is Artisan Cutlery. Um, that's the only powder steel that you're gonna see consistently in the knife world. And it is, as to my understanding, it is a powdered version of 9CR 18MOV or very, very similar, which is very good. Uh, definitely, there's nothing wrong with the ingot form of 9CR 18MOV. Uh, so powder forming it is, you're just gonna get that even particle distribution and everything will be slightly better. So yeah, uh, most people I think are enjoying this steel. I don't think too many people have an issue with it. At least I'm not aware of any issues. So I don't have an issue with it. Um, I think that's great. The geometry of the blade, definitely good. Definitely gonna be, you know, more of a slicer than anything else, but it does still have a puncture tip so you can use that for all of your puncturing needs. Um, let's move on back to the other side of the knife. I don't think there's really anything else I need to say about that. There's a rectangular uh, lanyard slot for lanyard people. I have a little bit of texturing right here on the aluminum backspacer. And you know, as you use this knife, because it is aluminum, and it looks like it's hard coat anodized, but that's, that's gonna wear. So over time, because they did choose aluminum and not G10, this is gonna kind of wear down and look a little bit weird. 
Uh, they probably just should have done G10, but it's fine that they did aluminum. I, I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, the pocket clip, like I said, is pretty good. Uh, you can mount it for left-handed carry, though this is a right-handed liner lock, so left-handed people, you're going to be, I'm sure, right? Lefties, you're dealing with, you, you've already dealt with buying lots and lots of right-handed knives and just flipping the clip over, so you probably won't have much of a problem with that, but the liner lock is intended for right-handed people. Um, I like everything about the clip, except for the fact that they did not recess the, um, where the clip actually mounts. They recessed the screws. So many companies are like, okay, we can't, we can't recess the clip and the screws, okay? We have to do just one of those things. So either choose the screws or the clip. Just recess them both. Recess the freaking, every time I get there, it just drives me nuts when I see a clip where the, the clip itself is recessed and they're like, I think we'll go with the button heads, okay? <laughs> I don't know why I do the Mackie voice for this, but it's like, if you're going to recess the clip, go ahead and recess the screws. It just makes it that much easier. It drives me nuts when we don't see both of those things being done. So in this case, the mounting part of the clip is not recessed, which is okay, but the screws are. So that's one little, I wish it was, you know, for, for how much detail went into the rest of the knife, that would have just been a nice. Of course, the reasoning was probably, well, then we'd have to mill out a pocket, which would be an eyesore on whichever side of the knife the pocket clip is not. Fair enough, right? I have to, t I'm a reviewer, I have to point this stuff out, right? And then the bill on the clip is just too. Honestly, you know, clips, pocket clips in general, I found just don't need to be this long. Um, you could you could chop this up by 25% and you could bring this bill uh, down a little bit, make it a little more shallow, and it would have been excellent. But as it as it is, this this clip is fine. It doesn't offend me as much as Civivi's standard clip, um, and even that clip is still okay. So you are uh, going to be working with a little bit. I would say this is medium to medium light peel ply texturing on the scales. So in and out of your pocket over months, it's going to fray up your pocket a little bit. It's not quite like, you know whatever that fishing knife is from Spyderco, where it has like the most aggressive uh, G10 ever. It's not like that. But over time, yeah, it's gonna fray it up. Um, we do have a traditional stop pin located right here, nice and beefy. Do we have shouldering? Yeah, we do have a little bit of shouldering. So that's nice. We have no blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no pivot lash. This is tight but consistent over time, like I said, especially if you've got you know, some 10 weight nano oil laying around. You can find that down in my, uh, the Amazon store that I've got linked in the description. If you've got that lying around, then it's definitely gonna smooth up over time, but it is consistent, that's nice. And the detent is click, nice and clicky. Do we have a centered blade? It is ever so slightly off, which I can't say surprises me all that much with the CJRV. I mean, most likely I can give it a quick turn and recenter the blade. If not, then that would mean you'd have to adjust the handle screws. Um, I uh, This is also not a brand new knife. It's actually, that's actually not. Is that turning both sides? Let's find out real quick. Is this a free spinning? R what? Man. It's actually not. <laughs> it's making it tighter. It's weird. It was like, it had a long way to go, but it didn't. I couldn't tell if it was free spinning or not. That's not actually doing much there. So the blade is slightly off centered, slightly. I mean, it's not really that expensive of a knife, so I don't know how much I want to get upset about that. If I wanted, it's still solid. If I wanted to center it, I would take these two screws off here, take uh, the G10 scales off so that I could start manipulating the frame screws and do the paper trick and try and get it centered. Um, so, you know, for knives in this price range, I've seen more off-centered CGRBs than a lot of other knives, but I've seen off-center blades from every company. So it's one of those things, a little bit of a dice roll. This one, it's just slightly off, not that big of a deal, but just be aware, you may get one that is off-center and you'll either, either have to center it yourself or just accept that it is off-center. It's really not a problem unless it's rubbing, but it is annoying definitely to buy a brand new knife and have it off-center. So. Anyways, lockup percentage, it's a liner lock. Can we see it in there? It's locking up at a healthy 30 or so, 35%. Like I said, no movement whatsoever, so that's fine. Um, so this is a $60 knife, which 
is pretty cool, right? Like when I think of a 60, so if on this channel, anything under $75 is considered a budget knife. So getting something that's got more in, not mean like, it's just, it's not a flat G10 scale. We've got two different pieces, two different colors. We got some cool lines in here, right? We have little fancy little things like the pivot collar and the backspace. We got a PVD coating. We got AR RPM 9 steel and we've got a just kind of a big, cool, it's not a huge knife, but it's a cool knife and it's functional. Like this isn't just like big and weird for the sake of being big and weird, no. The lines on the handle were thought out. The blade was thought out. I love that it's got an opening hole. I think that's the best way to do this, right? If you're gonna do a flipper, you gotta do a big blade that's got plenty of meaningful cutting edge, a big choil, right? You don't need to, I'm just saying. If you're gonna do a, if you're gonna do a flipper and a choil, you need to make sure that the choil counts and that there's still a lot of meaningful cutting edge, right? So plenty of room on the handle, plenty of room on the choil. Fun to look at, fun to hold, definitely gonna be fun to use, absolutely, and probably a joy to use. I mean, this is something you can really take out and use for long periods of time or just for simple cutting tasks. I mean, it's big enough that it'll handle it. I wouldn't say go out and baton with it, right? Don't go to try to, you know, pry the your house off its foundation, that's not, don't do that. Do knife stuff with it, but it'll handle it, right? Lots of continuous cutting and all of that. And it'll look cool, you know, depending on your taste and aesthetic, it'll look cool while it's doing it. Yeah, uh, I, th I really like this. The Caldera is awesome. Um, this is a knife that I can recommend to almost anybody. If you don't like larger knives, it is definitely on the larger side. It is gonna be a little bit of a pocket hog, right? Five ounces is definitely getting up there for some people. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for a lot of people, this is just going to be a fun thing to have. And at 60 bucks, it's really not going to break the bank. So yeah, this is going to go in my recommended knives playlist. And it's also going to go in my cheap knives. I like playlist because it is under $75. You can check out those playlists if you want to. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be pretty much it. Like I said, this is available. So check out the links in the description. I think that's it for today. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.